Good evening and happy Sabbath everyone. I would like to welcome you once again for our breakthrough series of sermon. Now, this is now our third episode and I would like to specially greet all our brothers and sisters in Christ in Rayong SDA International Church, Thailand. Thank you so much for keep on watching this uh, breakthrough series of sermons. You are watching us through Rasdak Live in Facebook. And I would like to thank our media ministry crew for doing your best for this series. I know that uh, you are doing a lot of things in preparing this uh, sermon and preparing this uh, video. So I hope and pray that all of you are experiencing God's blessings right now. This is already the third topic of our theme, Breakthrough. Now, I would like to repeat again, what is breakthrough? We mentioned that in our last two episodes. And I would like to reiterate again, the meaning of this breakthrough is an instance of achieving success in a particular sphere or activity. That is the meaning of breakthrough. And we focus our series of sermons every Friday evening in this theme. Another definition of breakthrough is overcoming something and having an achievement. A breakthrough is something that changes the course of your life going forward and ensures that things will never be the same again. So I hope that uh, we are learning as we progress with this series of study, my dear beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. In our first episode, we talk about unlocking breakthrough. That is our topic. And last Friday, we talk about breakthrough prayer. A kind of prayer that will help us break through the different difficulties in our lives. And we talk about the importance of prayer. And tonight, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I am excited to share to you another topic in this series and this topic is entitled breakout breakthrough breakout breakthrough let us bow our heads for a word of prayer let us pray father in heaven we thank you so much lord for another opportunity that you have given to each one of us in this holy sabbath evening and as we study your words tonight we ask lord for heavenly wisdom through the guidance of your Holy Spirit, so that we may be able to fully understand the message you wanted us to learn. And thank you for answering our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So we will be talking about breakout breakthrough. What is the meaning of this breakout, my dear brethren? According to the dictionary, breakout means a prison escape Referred as a bust out, break out, jail break, or prison break, is the act of an inmate leaving prison through unofficial or illegal ways. Normally, when this occurs, this breakthrough occurs, or, or this breakout occurs, normally there will be an effort that will be made on the part of authorities to recapture them and return them to their original detainers. Okay, so that is what will happen if breakout, you know, will occur. Now, the difference between breakout and breakthrough is that breakout is an escape from prison, while breakthrough is an advance through and past enemy lines. That is the difference. In other words, as an adjective, breakthrough is characterized by major progress or overcoming some obstacle. So that is the difference between breakout and breakthrough. Now, we will be talking a lot about prison cell in this study tonight, my dear brothers and sisters. And you know, prisons 
are most commonly used within a criminal justice system. So no, you, you know what is a prison cell. You can picture out in your mind what is a jail or a prison cell. People charged with crimes may be imprisoned until their trial. And those pleading or being found guilty of crimes at trial may be sentenced to a specified period of imprisonment. So that is what prison cell is all about. Now, in other words, in simplest terms, a prison can also be described as a building in which people are legally, or a building which people are legally held as a punishment, as a punishment for a crime that they have committed. So my question for all of us in this study tonight, have you experienced in prison? Have you experienced being put in a prison cell? Or if you haven't experienced being imprisoned, have you visited a prison cell? Maybe some of you experienced this, what we call prison ministry or jail ministry. And you know what is happening inside and you know what is the situation inside. Now tonight, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we will be talking a lot about the story in the Bible about two men who were imprisoned without sin. Two men being put or being locked up in a prison cell, but they haven't committed any single crime. And this story is found in the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 to 26. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 26. And let us now read the story. Let us start from verse 16. It says, Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predict predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, in this story we are told about a slave possessed by the demon woman. A slave that is being possessed by a demon. And this woman is also a fortune teller. And because she was a slave, her owners earned big deal of money for her fortune telling. So this is the background of the story. Let's continue reading in verses 18 and 19. It says, She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. Verse 19, when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. Now, this is now the situation of the story. You can just imagine the real scenario, my dear brothers and sisters. The owner of this slave-possessed woman got angry to Paul and Silas because they healed their slave and now they can't use her anymore to earn money. So what happened to Paul and Silas? They were arrested and, was, and, and were drugged to face the authorities. Let's continue reading the story in verses 20, 21, and 22. It says in verse 20, They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar. Verse 21, by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. When verse 22, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with drugs. Now my dear brothers and sisters, if we try to think about the real scenario in the story, we can just imagine the feeling of being arrested without committing any crime at all. In the story, Paul and Silas were stripped and beaten with rods. What an act of cruelty and injustice 
these two servants of God experienced. Now let us try to continue to read the whole story. In verses 23 and 24, it says, After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into, into prison, and a jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Verse 24, When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, what a story, what a scenario we can imagine now. The situation now is that Paul and Silas were put in prison. And it's not an ordinary prison cell. But according to the story, according to the verse that we have just read, it was an inner cell reserved for people who commit crime with heavier penalty. Can you just imagine the story? These two servants of God are suffering and facing difficulties in life. And inside that inner cell, their hands and feet are chained. Can you imagine? Hands and feet are fastened. That is their situation in that inner cell. These two servants of the Lord were locked down in the prison. They experience a lot of cruelty and all they have done is preach the gospel. In other words, they were put in prison without committing sin, without committing any crime at all. What they did is preach the gospel. That is all they have done. And let's continue reading in the next verse. Verse 25 and 26, it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26, Suddenly there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Now, my dear brethren, in spite of the difficult situation in that prison cell, Paul and Silas experienced the great grace of God. They experienced in that very difficult situation the great grace of God. They received everything they needed to transform a prison of pain into a prison of praise. They transformed the prison of pain into a prison of praise. Tonight, my dear friends, I would like to examine their experience for a little while. Let us try to dig deeper to the lessons that we can learn out from this story. There might be some of us here tonight who are suffering in our prison of pain. Just like Paul and Silas, we might have the same experience right now of being locked down in prison. Now, what kind of place is your prison? What kind of place is your prison? Number one, prison is a place of misery. It is a place of misery. The context in the story is that Paul and Silas are falsely accused by selfish men who cared for nothing but money. This man did not care for the poor, demon-possessed woman of whom they made their living. All they had done, all Paul and Silas had done was preach the gospel and set a poor, tortured soul free from bondage. They were doing their best to serve the Lord and still trouble came. No, you know, sometimes in our lives, even though we are doing good, even though we are following God's will, there will be trouble, there will be difficulties in life. Have you ever been there in that situation? So, our prison experience will like be a place of misery. But the prison experience number two will also be like a place of ministry. Place of ministry. Because when Paul and Silas found themselves in this prison experience, 
They were hurting, humiliated, and in need of some encouragement. They need some encouragement, you know. Now, they are in a prison because they did not, you know, do something wrong. But they have done good things. They have done the right things in life. They are in a prison cell because they have been lied about. They are in a prison, wounded, bleeding, and chained. Yet, remember this one. Take note of this. Yet, they are filled with the praises of the Lord. Wow, what a spirit these two servants of the Lord have in their life. They were possessed by the Spirit of God. That is the real faithfulness in the Lord in spite of the difficulties that they have experienced in life. They keep on praising the Lord. You know, my dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, in times of crisis, we need someone. We need people to encourage us. We need people to help us stand in the difficult situations. We need to check people now in this time of crisis in this world, in this time of pandemic. We need to check people how they are in times of health crisis. There might be some people are experiencing prison of pain and prison of difficulties in life. You might have this kind of place, place of misery. You might be in a prison of pain. Maybe some of you are in a prison of hatred. Maybe some of you are in prison of heartaches. Maybe some of you are in prison of broken relationships. Maybe some of you are in prison of suffering. Maybe some are in prison of sin. But I would like to tell you tonight, just like what happened to this story of Paul and Silas, you can still praise the Lord. You can still thank the Lord in spite of the difficult situation that we are facing. If this is your situation now, if you are in the prison of difficulties in life, you need Jesus in your life. He will always be ready to help you. We can lean on Him. And if you know someone with this experience right now, my dear brothers and sisters, it's time to give them encouragement and to share the hope of Jesus to these people. We need to reach out to them in this time of crisis. Now in the story, they praise the Lord in that inner cell. In the story, as they prayed, their prison was transformed from a place of pain into a place of praise. What a beautiful story for all of us to ponder tonight. Paul and Silas begin to sing songs of praises. And to the Lord. Now, my dear brethren, can you sing songs of praise to the Lord during difficult moments, during times of difficulties? Can you sing songs of praise to the Lord? Can you sing? Can you sing when you are crying? Can you sing if you have problems? Can you sing if there will be difficulties around you? Can you sing in times of this health crisis? Can you sing? I know that it's very hard to sing when you are sad we can just imagine you know the story of paul and silas they were singing inside that inner cell do you know this song i thank you lord you know this is the lyrics of this song we can just imagine if they are singing this song it says i thank you lord for the trials that come my way in that way i can grow each day as i let you lead and I thank you, Lord, for the patience those trials bring. In the process of growing, I can learn to care. In the midst of difficulties, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we can still sing, I thank you, Lord. And this is what happened to Paul and Silas. I can just imagine their story. We can still sing and praise the Lord in times of difficulties. According to Charles Spurgeon, he said, Any fool can sing in the day. It is easy to sing when we can read the notes by daylight. But the skillful singer 
is he who can sing when there is not a ray of light to read by. Songs in the night come only from God. They are not in the power of men. I would like to repeat this last sentence. It says, songs in the night come only from God. They are not in the power of men. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we can still sing even during night time. We can still sing even during midnight. In other words, in times of difficulties, in times of trials and hardships in life, in times of suffering, we can still sing and praise the Lord. When we are locked down in the bitter prisons of life, and we turn to the Lord to, to ask for help, He will be there for us. If we have Jesus in our life, we can sing amidst difficulties and crisis. And take note of this statement. God can turn our sighing into singing. He can turn our trials into testimony. He can turn our pain into praise. What a beautiful statement for us to remember. Paul and Silas were praising the Lord in the difficult place. And you know, in the verses that we have just read, it says there that the prisoners heard them. You know, the other cell, those prisoners around, heard them singing songs of praise. The prisoners heard their songs. Now this phrase, and the prisoners heard them, it means that the other prisoners around them were listening intently to Paul and Silas as they prayed and praised the Lord. What a witness for those prisoners. You know, brothers and sisters, there are times that we just don't know that people are watching us. People are just listening to what we are doing. People are watching our actions, our attitude, our faithfulness, our service. And in one way or another, these people will be inspired to follow the God in heaven because of what they have seen and what they have heard from us. So what are we doing in this time of crisis? Are we witnessing to people? You know, those prisoners were amazed by what they were hearing. You know, that is a place, you know, of, for, for, for suffering and for difficulties. But Paul and Silas were singing. Her, we have two men who had been severely beaten, carelessly thrown into the inner prison, and fastened down in the stocks, according to the Bible. Yet, they are not moaning. They are not groaning. They are praising their God and singing love songs to Him. That is a powerful ministry. I just wanted to remind each one of us tonight that the lockdown world is watching us. They are watching you and me as we go through our prison experiences. This world they could care less about us when we are filled with joy and everything is going on well. But they are all eyes and ears when crisis comes into our lives. The world is watching us to see how we will react when the pressure is placed on our lives. They want to see if our faith is real when we go into the prison house of suffering. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what kind of prison do you have right now? What kind of place do you have right now? In the story of Paul and Silas, it is a place of misery. Number two, it is a place of ministry. They became a witness inside the prison cell. And number three, it is a place of majesty. It is a place of majesty. According to Acts 16, 26 to 33, let us try to read these verses. 
starting from verse 26. Verse 26 says, Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Verse 27, The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. Verse 28, But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. Verse 29, the jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31, they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Verse 32, then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all others in his house. Verse 33, and that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately, he and all his household were baptized. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what a testimony. What a powerful ministry for Paul and Silas that this jailer and his family were brought into the foot of Jesus that prison cell became a place of majesty. One moment, things look bleak, but in the next moment, the power of the Lord changed the situation and things began to look better. Did you notice that even though they were free, they were still in prison? They were made free while they were still in the prison experience, my dear friends. God can and He will do that in your life. And when He does, it is a display of awesome, almighty power. The Lord can help us break out in our prison experience. According to this statement, take note of this. He can take a time of profound heartache and transform it into a time of great help. What a beautiful statement for all of us tonight. Why did God allow these men to go through this prison? They are doing God's will. They are proclaiming God's love. But why did God allow them to experience this one? Sometimes, you never get an answer to the why question. Sometimes, God will send you into a prison experience for His own purposes. And you may never know why these things have happened to you. And sometimes, even sometimes, it seems that God is messing up with our plans from the word mess up, M-E-S-S. -S. Sometimes it seems that God is destroying our plans. Sometimes it seems that God is messing up with our plans. We don't know what is happening around us, but if we keep on being faithful to the Lord, keep on doing His will, keep on following His leading, we will know later His purpose and we will know his plan for us. Just like, you know, the song, our theme song in this breakthrough series of sermon, our theme song is about trust his heart. The line of this song is telling us God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. If you don't understand, if you cannot see his plan, if you cannot trace his hand, trust his heart. Because if we keep on trusting the Lord, it seems that at our present time, it seems that God is messing up with our plans. But we will know the reason when the time comes. It is because God has a better plan. God has a plan for you and me. According to Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. My dear brothers and sisters tonight, 
when the prison door slams behind you and you find yourself locked down locked down tight in the shackles of your pain and problems you may feel that there is no reason to praise the Lord but remember God has a plan if you don't know his plan if you cannot trace his hand trust his heart and he will help you breakthrough according to the pen of inspiration Ellen White said in the darkness before dawn page 43 though enemies may thrust them into prison yet dungeon walls cannot cut off the communication between their souls and Christ the prison will be as a palace for the rich in faith dwell there and the gloomy walls will be lighted up with heavenly light as when Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises at the midnight in the Philippian dungeon. The same God of breakthrough, the same God who helped Paul and Silas can give us breakthrough at our present time. If you'll turn your heart toward heaven, he will hear you and he will help you to lift your voice in praise to him. Then he will help you break out from your prison of difficulties. You will also find that he will give you the peace that you need in your heart. That he will use your prison experience for his glory and for your own good. My dear brothers and sisters tonight, if you are in lockdown prison experience, let me encourage you to bring your need to Him. Let me encourage you to allow Him to turn your prison of pain into a prison of praise. And if there are needs, bring them to Him and He will give you the breakthrough. May God continue to bless us as we continue to trust in Him and He will guide us to an open door to the different situations of difficulties and suffering we have right now. This is my prayer to each one of us. May God bless us all.